Got it. Okay, I'd like to call this meeting to order. We're gonna wave the flag salute this evening. I'm gonna read the Sunshine Law Statement. All requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act have been met for this meeting of the Board of Education of the Borough of Ordell. Notice that this meeting was filed with the record in town news and all persons requesting such notice. Mr. Darian, would you read the mission statement? Sure. The Ordell Public School District a dedicate, is dedicated to the ongoing pursuit of educational excellence through comprehensive, innovative curriculum and instruction. The district is committed to providing opportunities for social, emotional, and academic discovery to foster curiosity, courage, and character. Our goal is to prepare our students to become lifelong learners who are self-directed, resilient, productive, and responsible citizens. Thank you. Roll call. Mr. Castro? Here. Mr. Griffin? Here. Mrs. Levy? Here. Mrs. Norian? Here. Mrs. Shapiro? Here. Mrs. Walker? Here. Mr. Walsh? Here. Mr. Darian? Here. Mrs. Nichols? Here. At this time, we're going to open to the public for agenda items only. If the public would like to speak, we have approximately 48 people watching right now. There is a feature where you can raise your hand. When we see your hand raised, um, I will call on you. I will ask Mr. Marmaro to unmute you and you will have um, time to speak and then you will be muted again. So right now we're open to the public. Mr. Marmaro, you wanna explain how someone can raise their hand in case they don't know? Sure, if you go over on the right hand side where it lists your name, you should be able to see it when you mouse over it that you can have an allow to talk button. See, you would hit the allow to talk button, they would raise your hand, then I would see it, I would let you in. I'm gonna take this person off now, remove, disable. And then I'll unmute your microphone so you can make your public comment. Oh, yeah, they might be. Okay, not seeing anyone raising their hand, we'll move forward. Dorothy, let me just. Yeah. Let me just double check to make sure because I don't see anyone raising their hand right now. I want to make sure that the setting isn't set up so that the mute by default for entering the uh, the room isn't enabled. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> Someone, okay. Put it down. Oh, okay. Me, I tested it. All right. Yeah. Okay, it's all good. Okay, yep. Okay, so um, we'll move forward. Oh, I Oh. Someone's hand was just raised. Okay, so Mrs. Schaum, uh, could you please unmute Ms. Schaum? Sure. Um. Okay, I can unmute myself. I just wanted to let you know that what you're seeing is not what we're seeing. We can't see ourselves. We can only see you. Right. And raise your hand is in the bottom lower corner, just based on what John was just oh, okay. Mm -hmm. to us, and I just wanted you to know. Other than that, hello. Thank well. you. Hi, Mrs. Shom. <laughs> okay, so can you now mute Ms. Shom again, John? She is. Yep. And I'm going to put Ms. Shom's hand down. There we go. Okay, so we're going to um, move forward. Um, I know we have a presentation tonight on how things have been going in school. Um, so I guess I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mrs. Longo. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Welcome to our first virtual Board of Education meeting. I would like to first say that our thoughts and sympathies are with those in our district community who have experienced illness and loss of precious life in their families and among their loved ones. May the coming days find you and you are safe and well. During these challenging days, I believe we have all been heart heartened by the support that has been provided to those in need the beautiful messages of gratitude expressed by our children, the outstanding work of our team administra of administrators and teachers, the strong collaboration of school families and community members, and the selfless heroism of all in the healthcare field. 
Tonight, I asked our principal, Ms. Megan Bozius, and our special education director, Ms. Linda Disler, to share with you the distance learning model that has been implemented for our children. I wanted you to get a glimpse of what remote instruction looks like here in our school. Before we play the video, I would like to personally thank the administrators, teachers, aides, and maintenance staff for the countless hours and dedication they have given to our students. And now, please share with me a look at Oradell Public School remote instruction. John. To begin talking about our remote learning journey, we don't just begin on March 16th. That's when the remote part happened. However, our learning journeys began way back in September, right here in our Oradell Public School classrooms. Everything we're doing remotely right now is tied to what would be happening here in our classrooms. We continue to address the same curricular expectations and we continue to use primarily the same resources. Yes, we've absolutely taken advantage of the many free offers out there to supplement what we were already doing. However, what we remember and our goal more than anything else is consistency. This part right now, remote learning, it's a bridge. It's a bridge from what was happening in our classrooms to what will one day happen again. During the week of March 9th, we created the structure for remote learning that we continue to use today. We placed all lessons for grades K through two in a designated website for distance learning and all lessons for grades three through six in Google Classrooms. During this time, we also set up oversight structures, including designated email addresses for specific issues. Most importantly, we began planning. We identified which administrators would oversee certain curricular areas, and we spent significant time planning with teachers. We continue to use this same format today, planning in two-week intervals. Recorded lessons, live lessons, and ongoing feedback are our three major forms of instruction. Each form of instruction has different benefits. One of the benefits of recorded instruction is that it allows working parents the opportunity to help their child with a lesson when they have time. They don't need to meet at a specific time, but they can watch a lesson later in the day or earlier in the day when it's most convenient for the family. Such a great job. Here we go. Ag flag. Verbs or action words. Screencast mm -hmm. lessons allow also, teachers to share their screen with their students while providing narration. Okay. So this allows for modeling so and demonstrating so of the day's teaching point. Like our previous example of recorded lessons, How many parents are able to help their children access the teaching of the day when it's convenient to them. Additionally, recorded lessons allow teachers to share across the grade level, increasing the amount of live instruction students are receiving. Banks of the Nile River mean. Synchronous teaching, where teacher and students meet together for the daily lesson, whether that happen in a Google Meet or in Zoom has the primary benefit of adding an interpersonal component. Students and teachers can see each other in their classroom community. They can hear each other. They can ask questions of each other. This often adds an increased level of engagement. You could say that like um, she, she probably likes books a lot because a lot of her poems I, know, I notice are, are about books. Absolutely. During remote learning, we use multiple tools to assess student understanding. This includes the use of Google Classroom, where students can submit their work and receive feedback from their teacher on their work. This also includes the use of Flipgrid and Padlet, where students can submit short videos, pictures, or text to answer a specific question or in response to a specific assignment. Teachers can then provide feedback either with a video 
or with text. I dyed three Easter eggs. We have also increased our usage of IXL and RAS kids in the younger grades, providing teachers with more data about how their entire class and individual students are performing to inform future teaching. Good evening. Although we have had to implement new platforms practically overnight, the Special Services Department is hard at work continuing to provide the services and specialized instruction to meet the needs of our diverse learners. There are many staff members who provide direct services and instruction to students with diverse learning needs, as well as consult with teachers and parents. Whether at OPS or in homes, education continues. Basic skills instructors continue to check in with their students. ESL teachers continue to support students during class lessons through individual and small group instruction and by modifying lessons for their English language learners. The TAD teacher continues remote instruction via Google Classrooms for each TAD grade and provides opportunities to meet together. Special education teachers continue to provide instruction across a full continuum of remote platforms in co-taught classrooms, resource room programs, self-contained programs, and multi-sensory instruction. In addition, they continue to provide support to students in small groups and individually, as well as modify mainstream instruction to meet students' needs. Related service providers continue their work with students through direct virtual therapies and through regular consultations with parents and with staff. Oh, I got it. And put it into the toothpick. And pick them up, pinch it, not too hard, not too... Oops, come to the end. But now you know you have all kinds of silly things that you can ask and answer about and talk about. Okay? Instructional aids continue to support students during live instruction and computer and phone-based conferences. The child study team continues to hold CST meetings, plan evaluations, and develop plans for the upcoming 2020-21 school year, such as placements, programs, and transitioning sixth graders to the middle school. I have been busy ensuring that our remote learning plans are compliant with temporary changes in the New Jersey Special Education Code and that we are doing what is needed to meet the needs of our students by following individual education plans to the greatest extent possible. In addition, I continue to meet with staff daily and speak with parents. I continue to plan for our extended school year program and focus on getting ready for our 2020-21 school year by working on the budget, staffing needs, projections, and programs to best meet the needs of our learners. Although we are all separated, in many ways, we are closer than ever. Speaking on behalf of the department, we miss our students, and we look forward to being together soon. At Oradell Public School, educating the whole child has always been our goal, and remote learning is no different. Our special areas continue to provide lessons and activities to address multiple intelligences. We continue to focus on students' social, emotional, and learning needs through open circle lessons, social skills groups, and our counselor's blog, which continues to have important information for parents and families. Finally, our assistant principals continue to be the link to our homes, following up when there are concerns about students, talking with parents, and maintaining open lines of communication. One thing is certain about our remote learning journey. No matter what challenges we face, we will continue to move forward together.
Thank you. Thank both of you for that. That was a beautiful video. And I hope the uh, board saw some of the things that uh, are going on in the classroom. Any uh, questions from the board for Mrs. Longo? She may not have the answers, but you know, you can email her also. But do you have any questions quick right now or? I, I just have to say that um, I don't have any little ones in school or even in upper grades, but I take walks around the neighborhood a whole lot and folks are stopping and keeping social distance, of course, but sharing um, how pleased they are at what they're doing at OPS with the teachers and uh, how happy the kids are. So that's really such a plus. And um, one particular child who's quite quite a sharp apple that I know, and, and um, he's really being challenged. The mom said um, he has a lot of work, keeps him busy. So these are all positive things that at a time like this with remote learning that, um, and certainly our teachers are faced with their home situation. So kudos. As well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted you all to see what's happening because I know not all of you have children in the K-6 school. Um, so I wanted you to see that and what the teachers are doing. They're really working hard. They're doing a great job. Thanks. Levy? Um, I would like to say as both a parent and a board member um, to commend um, our staff as I always like to do because they have been phenomenal to my children and I've heard through my friends and other parents. And again, as I walk through town a lot, I think I've probably now walk the entire town more than I've ever the entire, all the times I lived here. Mike, I was just a little curious, um, Mrs. Longo, and I don't know if you have the answer, but in terms of our um, children with special needs or anything like that, have we been received feedback that we're sort of meeting all of the goals and that we're doing everything um, you know, has there been positive feedback or is it an ongoing process with the, with the parents of what's going on in the house? You know, everything's kind of um, an upheaval. And I was just curious specifically about that. Um, well, I've only, um, Linda Disler could probably answer that better, but I haven't had any complaints. And when I spoke with her, she said she had, she was getting a lot of accolades from the parents for all of the things that they are doing because they all they are doing besides just the classroom education they are doing related services and they are doing the um the meetings with the parents so they're doing everything they possibly can do that you know, that they can do virtually um so the the reports so far have been good excellent thank you mr castro yeah, um, just first, I, I want to just um, kind of um, echo what um, Robin said. I think the, um, the teachers are doing a great job from what I hear. Um, and just, just on a comparative um, basis, like I have coworkers in New York, we have relatives that are in Pennsylvania, and it, it does sound like what Ordell is doing, it seems to be far and away ahead of what a lot of other regions and areas are doing. So, you know, um, I just want to just thank the teachers for all the hard work and effort that they're putting in. Uh, my, my question is similar to Robin, I guess. Um, I imagine the process being so new, I'm sure you're getting, there's a lot of feedback from both parents and teachers as well, both, I'm sure both positive and negative. Can, mm -hmm. you, can you speak to how you're kind of handling that and how you're kind of processing that and, and kind of um, giving attention to that? Like, how, how is that working? How's that process working out? Actually, I haven't received any calls from parents. Um, I know Ms. Disler has spoken with some parents and I can talk to her and find out what some of the comments are and I can relay that to you but um, I haven't received any calls from parents. I know okay. she speaks with them regularly. So yeah, and that, the child study team. And that wasn't specifically referring to parents, but just in general, I'm sure the teachers have feedback as well. And um, you know, I'm sure there's, there's definitely, I'm sure there's feedback all around that and whether or not you're getting it, I'm sure people have right. thoughts on it. So I'm wondering how that would, that's working out. Well, every couple of weeks, they take time out to plan for the next two weeks and at that time, they refine and fix anything they think that could be okay. done a little bit better than it was the time before. So they're really using this time every time they plan to make things even better than it was the, you know, the two weeks previous to that. Yeah. Um, you know, this is all kind of new for everyone. Yeah, exactly. That, that's why I imagine, I'm sure, like I said, if you're not hearing it, I'm sure that people have thoughts. So just because it's the, 
the current the nature of the situation yeah so yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. this is norian i just w wanted to say that um from what i saw in the video i think that our staff has really stepped up to the plate i i I would like to praise them for everything that they're doing. I know how difficult it is to do when you've got your own children in the house. Um, and um, I think that my questions were answered from the video. I didn't really have any questions from what I saw. It looked to me like they're handling everything. They're going about it in a methodical manner. Um, I've heard from other teachers who have not had the kind of support that our staff has. And, and I think we are ahead of, ahead of the curve on this one. I think we have the best possible. Thank you. Mrs. Shapiro. Hi, am I on? Okay, I'm on. Um, I also wanted to echo uh, sentiments that um, I was absolutely blown away when we went into virtual learning at how smoothly it went um, for both of my kids, OPS and Riverdale. Um, I knew it was going to be difficult and it was remarkable. I was so impressed. And um, also hearing from people um, out of state and even on the West Coast, um, their kids aren't getting a fraction of what our kids are getting. And so kudos to everybody it's big team effort um because this is really tough and uh i know mm -hmm. spring break uh what was it spring break? i don't even know what month we're in um seems like it was, it was ages tough. ago doesn't it I, you know that's like <laughs> april 99 yeah. um but that week that we were off we didn't have the routine and it was it was so wonderful you know everything's upside down and when we slid into this it really minimized the impact that's been so i you know different for every child, but good job to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have anything else for your report, Mrs. Longo? No, that's it. So if you could maybe thank Ms. Bozios and Ms. Disler for putting that together too, because I'm sure that took a long time. So we appreciate yes. them doing that for us. And I will. we're back in person, we can see them in person also. Okay. So we, we appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay. I hope it was helpful. Definitely. We appreciate it. Uh, moving on to our business administrator's report and our budget presentation, Mr. Marmara. All right, so I'm going to share a screen again. We're going to go to the uh, PowerPoint presentation. Okay, everyone can see it okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All right, so um, to say this first year has been an interesting year would be an understatement. So first, um, my well wishes to everyone out there. I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy and is adapting as best they can uh, to the current situation right now. So um, the last meeting we had was a tentative board meeting. We had that out on the lawn. Now we're having our final budget presentation in front of a screen. And if you told me that at the beginning of the year, I probably would have thought you were joking, but here we are, um, and now it's time to unveil the 2020-2021 uh, final budget. So just a quick recap of uh, what I'd like to go through is just the budget development process that uh, we went through to get to the end result, um, discussing some of our estimated revenues, our expenditures, how the, the money gets spent. We'll go over what's on tonight's uh, board agenda, the 2020-2021 final budget resolution. Um, the tax impact, of course, that's important. So the tax impact to each taxpayer in the borough uh, Ordell. And then what the next steps are um, after tonight's meeting. So the budget development process starts with the calendar. Um, I went over this briefly in the tentative budget presentation. So just to uh, go over some of the highlights, the budget is a collaborative effort. So it's not just me, it's, it's the, uh, the staff district-wide that gets involved with the budget, it's the board that gets involved, the, the finance subcommittee that gets involved. Um, so just going through it quickly, um, we start early in November um, and begin with the budget process at that point. That's when we distribute all of our budget materials, go through what our goals are, uh, explain the process um, from that point it's into December looking at 
the major expenditures, staffing, what our enrollment is going to be looking like. Um, by January, we're going to have a multi-year comparison that details each of the budget years. So from that point now, November to January, it's a little tricky. We're working in three different budget years, essentially, because we're closing our books on the prior year with the auditors. We're working in our current year, and now we're predicting for the next year already, and we're not even halfway through um, the current year. Uh, when we get into February now, we'll go to the next slide. So getting into February, we're still fine tuning and we're making tweaks. Um, this is when we get our state aid allocation, which has a huge impact on how we're going to move um, forward with the budget. Uh, March brings us to our tentative budget presentation. And then finally, that brings us to tonight. Um, April 29th is our final budget hearing. So just in a nutshell, the budget process, um, it's just a balancing act. We're looking to see what our revenues are, see what our expenditures are, how we're going to balance these. Um, and it's a constant give and take. So at the end of the day, we see where we're gonna land, if we're gonna be in a surplus or a deficit. In this case, um, when we were going through the process, we came into a large deficit. We were approximately $700,000 in a deficit. And um, there's a couple of things that we had to look at, uh, areas and revenues that we might be able to take advantage of for next year to help close the gap, some cuts that we had to make. And then some things to consider, some of the budget constraints that we're uh, locked into. So everyone knows we're locked into a 2% tax, uh, tax levy cap just meaning that whatever we had from last year, we can only increase the tax levy 2% from that prior year. So that leaves us looking at other options like state aid. In this case, we received an increase in state aid. And then we have to look at all the, the fixed costs that are associated with the budget, which is pretty much just the, the cost of doing business for the, the school district. That includes the professional uh, fees for our uh, attorneys, auditors, IT staff, et cetera. Um, the staff salaries, of course, and health benefit costs are a large one also. And then we look to maintain our special education tuition costs, which usually outpace our 2% tax uh, levy. So that's always a challenge to try to harness that. So with this year's budget, um, some of the highlights that we wanted to address or I'd like to address in this presentation is um, with this budget, it's going to maintain and enhance our existing programs. Um, one of the things that's important to the Oradell Public School District is maintaining that uh, smaller class size. So we prioritize by not cutting any of the teaching staff, leaving a lot of staff levels to maintain the current um, uh, class size at the that the district is uh, used to having. Uh, also, we're continuing with the district's technology plan. So we're doing a, a refresh right now with the one-to-one -one, uh, Chromebook um, program that we have. So we're looking to do a refresh for one of the grades that will be getting new devices um, next year. And then finally, as I mentioned before, trying to anticipate if we were gonna have any additional special education costs, any students going out of district um, and the costs associated with that and how we would be able to uh, afford that, those costs. So now this brings us to um, a quick look at our revenues here. So this is just a side-by-side -side comparison, comparing the 1920 school year with next year's uh, revenues, projected revenues for the 2021 school year. So as you can see, some of the things um, to highlight are the increase in the, the tax levy. So that's the, the main avenue of revenue that's going to afford us to uh, fund the budget in future years. Um, also this year, we were lucky enough, we did receive an increase in state aid of approximately $83,000. And then we look at other areas um, to increase a little bit. Miscellaneous revenue, we increased a little bit. Um, you'll see the withdrawals now from our reserve accounts. So we have a capital reserve, maintenance reserve, and an emergency reserve account, and that's fluctuated. So um, this year we finished up on uh, the tag classroom and faculty room 
renovation project. That's where you see the $570,000 amount that was added from uh, 1920 school year. We won't need that this year. The project is completed. Uh, we did a withdrawal from maintenance reserve to help fund the budget. No withdrawals from emergency reserve that was done um, last year for, or I should say this year, so it gets confusing when you're going from year to year. So that was taken out this year in the 1920 school year for some security enhancements. And that brings us to a uh, total operating budget of uh, $13,330,699. That does not include any of the special revenue um, accounts that we get um, for federal grants, such as the ESSA grant or the IDA grant, and any of the debt service funding that we have. So now here's a, a high level look of how the, the funds are spent. This is a listing of the expenditures. So as you can see that the biggest chunks is going to the instruction. So regular instruction, special education instruction uh, make up approximately 59% of, our, uh, of our spending. Um, next in line is benefits. That's, um, any kind, that's our health benefits and any fringe benefits. That's approximately 18.5%. And then as you can see, going from there, administrative costs, uh, facilities costs, student support services. And then the miscellaneous is a little sliver that's for um, co-curricular and extracurricular activities for the students. So now, as we drill in a little bit deeper, just looking at the regular education, uh, Cost, you can see it's, it's mostly the salaries, so the biggest chunk is going to fund the salaries. Um, as I mentioned before, one of uh, the priorities of the district is maintaining our class sizes, and we like to focus that our funding on, the, um, on the, the human resources, the staffing of the district. So that's where the 91.7% comes in. Um, and then the rest is just um, the supplies, a uh, small amount for the professional development and then professional technical services coming in at 3.7% of our spend. Okay, next we'll drill down to the special education side of how these expenditures are broken down. So as you can see, salaries still make up the majority. So we try to keep as many students as possible in district. Um, for the students that do go out of district, that's where you'll see the out of district tuitions uh, piece there. So that makes up the next biggest uh, piece of the pie. Um, after that's purchase related services. So that's your occupational therapies, your physical therapy services. Uh, we do transport our students. Um, so the special education students that go out of district, we do provide transportation. So that's the next largest part of the, uh, the pie there. And then finally, the, the supplies. So tonight, the agenda item that's listed, it's going to uh, detail what our, our budget is. So as I mentioned before, the general operating budget's $13,330,699. Uh, when you factor in the special revenue fund uh, and the debt service fund, that brings us to a total budget of $14,103,030. Um, now, the part that gets funded for the tax levy is the general fund and the debt service fund. So the total tax levy for the 2020-2021 school year is going to be $12,599,597. So now here's a breakdown of the tax impact and how it's going to affect the uh, the taxpayers of the of the Barrow of Ordell. Um, so as I mentioned before, up top is going to show how we tie into that twelve million five hundred ninety nine thousand five ninety seven number. So we have our debt service that we're paying off for next in next year. It's five hundred seven thousand seven hundred. Our general fund is $11,970,226. So that number reflects the maximum 2% tax increase, the maximum 2% tax levy increase. And then also there's something called bank cap, which is listed there for $121,671. And um, real quickly what bank cap is, um, bank cap is either money that in prior years budget we haven't gone to the maximum 2%. So whatever that leftover amount is that gets put in a reserve account, 
that has to be used, there is an expiration date on that on those funds. So it could be either coming from that, it could be coming from a health benefit adjustment, which in our case it wasn't. Um, and in this case, with the $121,671, it was going to be expiring. So as I mentioned before, when we came up with our initial budget, we were in a deficit. So we used the bank cap to help alleviate the deficit. And as I said, it, it would have expired. So it's a user to lose it. If it wasn't used this year, it would have expired and we wouldn't have access to it in um, next year's budget preparation. So we decided to use it. Um, now, as we go down uh, further, just looking at the, um, the estimated taxpayer impact. So with the average assessment, um, it's interesting, the average assessment for the homes in 1920 was $549,563 and actually went up $11,591 um, projected for next year, 2020, 2021. So that's where 561,154 is. That's the average assessed um, price of a home in Oradell. On the right-hand column, that shows the annual increase um, there. So you'll see it's $136 to the average home since the assessment has gone up. That comes out to uh, approximately 37 cents per day. And then listed on the left is different assessments going from 300,000 and jumping approximately 200,000 each step all the way to 900,000 um, for $900,000 as long as the home was assessed at the same amount, your annual increase would be approximately $82 uh, per year. So as I mentioned before now, next steps is tonight we're going to be approving uh, the final budget. That's uh, today's date. Within 48 hours, the user-friendly budget will be posted on the district website for everyone to review, and then we'll be certifying the tax levy um, with the town. So that concludes my report. If anyone has any questions. John, can you put us back so I can see the board members in case they have questions? Yep, let me, I'm gonna. Any questions from the board? I think we should thank the finance committee for the job they did. This is the first year in a long time that we've been behind and we had to make it up. It's a big difference having money to add to the budget or use for the budget and not having money and having to look for it. It's a big difference. Thank you. Mrs. Weavy? I just, and I know it's further down on the agenda um, about the fact that the, the tax levy money won't be coming, might not come in on time. Um, and how will, that, how will that affect this? Um, or have we made contingencies? Should we not get it in time? Mr. Marmora, I know, called the, t the town. You want to tell them about your conversation, Mr. Marmora? Thank you. Yeah, yep. So at, at this point, it's, it's really early to tell them. There's a lot of speculation that would go uh, along those lines. So I don't want to really speculate too much. But as soon as this came out, I made sure to, to call the, the CFO, Katie Chen, downtown, just to see, just to make sure we were OK um, with the rest of the year. So. As far as the rest of the year goes, she assured me that we would be fine and there'd be um, no issues. So uh, referring to the resolution though that, that you just brought up, I might as well just address it really quickly. So that final resolution is something that is um, suggested from most of the professional associations in the state and it's opposing that bill that's um, pretty much saying if the tax levy isn't, if tax revenue isn't received by the town, they can withhold some of our tax levy money um, to the schools, which would result, you know, in a catastrophic issue for all school districts uh, across the state. So that's, you know, then I'll just address that, uh, that resolution right now. So we're going to discuss that when we get to that section, but um, you want to clarify, when you spoke to um, the town CFO and you said we were fine through the end of the year, did you mean the end of the school year or the end of the, fisc of the, end of the calendar year? I think you meant the school year, School right? year. Yeah, school year. So that's just another few months. So we're good through that. And then we're going to see what happens. Mm -hmm. 
Mrs. Walker? Oh, well, this then is um, facing every every school district in New Jersey. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Mr. Castro. Just a quick question, John, for you on the um, on that bank cap that one hundred twenty one thousand. Just to make sure we're clear as, as to what that is. Is mm -hmm. it? I think I understood it as. That is, is that previous years' tax levies that weren't utilized and were going to expire, we'd have to give back to the town? Or what, what exactly is, is that coming from? So, it, so it's a combination of a, a couple of things. One of them, so the most popular is um, a health benefit adjustment, meaning if we were to come in lower than what the state would recommend, a district of our size should be spending on health benefits. But in this case, what it was, it was, um, uh, prior year's uh, tax levy. Uh, so if you don't use that maximum 2%, whatever the difference is goes into a reserve account. And there's an expiration, there's a three year expiration. So if you don't use it in three years, um, to be honest with you, I don't know where it goes. It just, it doesn't, we, we don't have the option to use the funds. So and is, to lose it. And is the 121,000 for a uh, cumulative of the past three years or is there like nothing left after we've done that? What what does that represent? So, that 120 so that's from one year and then it moves forward. Okay, so there is actually additional that we could utilize if, if we needed to, or not. There's no, we no, could only no. use one year at a time. Yeah. Okay. We took Got all it. of it. We took we the took. amount we could, and mm -hmm. it's in addition to the two percent cap. So it's it's it allows you to go over your two percent. It's the only way you can go over two percent. So we're going to the taxpayers for two percent plus the banked cap. Yeah. Got it. Any other questions? Anything else for your report, Mr. Marmara? Uh, nope, that's all. So I want to thank Mr. Marmara also for coming in and doing such a good job his first year with us as a full thank BA. You. He did an awesome job, and we're so happy to have him. And uh, next year is going to be so easy for you now. Well, thank you, and thank you to the board. Thank you to the Finance Committee, and thank you to uh, Barbara. And uh, Dr. Anzel, who's no longer here, but Barbara was instrumental in, in helping too. She stepped right in and, and helped me out and went a long way. So thank you to everyone involved. All right, so we're gonna move to minutes. We have the review of uh, March 18th. Any questions or comments, please email Ms. Marmara. We have approval of March 11th. Do I have a motion? I move that we approve the minutes of March 11th. Second. Second. Second by Mrs. Walker, any questions? All the question? Mr. Castro? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Dean, since I wasn't here. Mrs. Levy? Yes. Mrs. Norian? Yes. Mrs. Shapiro? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Darian? Yes. Mrs. Nichols? Yes, we'll move to committee reports, administrative items. Mr. Darren, would you take A1? Uh, yes. Um, I would like to introduce items uh, A1, please. Do I have a second? Second. Second by whom? Is that Mrs. Norian? Yes. Second by Mrs. Norian. Any questions? Call the question. Mr. Castro? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mrs. Levy? Yes. Mrs. Norian? Yes. Mrs. Shapiro? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Darian? Yes. Mrs. Nichols? Yes. Buildings and grounds, Mr. Darian? Uh, yes, I have uh, nothing to report this time. Thank you. Uh, curriculum, Mrs. Norian? Um, nothing to report. I think we had an excellent presentation on what our curriculum looks like at this point. Uh, and I'm sure that we'll be addressing a follow up uh, once we've come out of this situation that we'll see in our committee. Okay, moving to finance technology, Mrs. Shapiro. Hi, good evening. Um, I just wanted to give a, a quick finance uh, subcommittee report. Uh, Mr. Marmor did a beautiful job explaining the whole process. I wanted to give a quick and dirty of what the committee did. We met numerous times. 
um, since November, December. And when he put together that first budget that had everything we needed, we had a deficit of over $700,000. And uh, that makes you pause. Um, just like every year, we reviewed all contracts. We, you know, make sure we continue all of our shared services for cost savings, and then we had to plug holes. Um, this year, we plugged holes with some maintenance reserve. We had to, you know, tighten up on some supplies, but the committee was uh, committed to maintaining current staff size and class size. And uh, fortunately, we were able to do that this year. Every year is tight. Um, this one was a roller coaster and uh, mission accomplished. So thank you, Mr. Marmora. And uh, that concludes my re report um, for this evening. I'd like to uh, make a motion appro to approve items D1 through D13. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Walsh. Do we have any questions on this section? There's a lot of items in it. Do you want to, excuse me, do you want to pull, wait a second, is that, uh, do you want to pull the resolution about opposing the bill and vote on that separately or have a discussion? Uh, I mean, we can, do you want us to pull it separately? Do you just want to have the discussion I, now? No, no, I just, you had indicated at the beginning of the meeting that we would just discuss it and I just wanted it to be discussed during this section, not during the budget um, presentation. So I do know some people have concerns over it. Um, does everyone understand what the resolution is? Should we should we pull it to discuss it or? or I think John explained it. Okay. What did you say, Mr. Walsh? I think John explained it. What this resolution was. Um. I, I would I, I would like to pull it from this section if possible so that we can vote separately on this. Yeah. Um, if we can do that now and then later discuss it, uh, that would be uh, more beneficial for myself. So point of order that Nancy has to then okay. pull it. Okay, so I would like to thank you. Uh, I would like to pull item D13. And so am I making a motion to approve items D1 through D12 right now? Yes, I second it. Catherine, do we need, Catherine, do we need a motion to table it or no? It, well, we're not tabling it. We're just doing it separately. So okay. we're just pulling it from the, the list. We're only doing D1 okay. through 12, and then we'll do D13 separately. We're going to do a right after it? I would guess. Okay, that's fine. Okay. So just re redo your, I guess, Nancy, you just redid your motion for D1 through 12? And John yeah. seconded it. John second, one through 12, okay. So any questions on D1 through D12? Call the question. Mr. Castro? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mrs. Levy? Yes. Mrs. Norian? Yes. Mrs. Shapiro? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Darian? Yes. Mrs. Nichols? Yes. So do we want um, Mrs. Shapiro to present D13 separately? Uh, it should. Okay. I'm back. Yeah. okay. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to approve item D13. I'll second it. By Mr. Walsh, any questions? I have a comment, not necessarily a question. Um, it's not really, the, the background on this resolution isn't here within this agenda, um, but you can kind of take that from you know, the background from the first paragraph that states that it would allow the Department of Community Affairs um, to permit municipalities to lay transmission of uh, property tax revenues to school districts during a gubernatorial declared emergency. 
you know, a gubernatorial emergency, you know, could mean a lot of things. Um, but this is not meant for a, a, a normal time. You know, this is meant, this bill is meant for a situation kind of like our global pandemic or even worse. And in that environment, um, this would apply. So I, I just kind of wanted to state that um, if we were in such a bad situation where the governor declared an emergency and the states, or excuse me, the municipalities needed the funding, um, most likely the school would be closed uh, just as it is now. Uh, well, we have remote learning, but you know, um, you know, I think this was designed for catastrophes and uh, a delay in the payments to support the municipality for emergency funds for the taxpayers, you know, may warrant a delay. I don't know. You know, this is very vague. Um, I, I'm just saying all this so that um, we just take that into account. Uh, and we don't either approve or reject this without context. So. So my question on that, um, Greg, would be, let's say we do have a catastrophe. Schools are closed. Let's say the town needs the money to feed its residents. I mean, we're in a major, major catastrophe. If this passes, let's say, and, um, you know, because we're opposed to it, don't you think in a situation like that, the governor would have executive power to stop it? Because he already signed an executive order that certain towns, if, if they wanted to push their payment off from May to June, did that today. Do you think he would have executive power to do that anyway, whether this passes or not? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Eh, you know, or, or, you know, could the, the governor be, you know, superseded by the president with his Defense Powers Act, uh, you know, with a national emergency? I, I don't know. Um, you know, it's just, it's political in nature, and I don't feel qualified, you know, to, to play, you know, through the scenarios and come up with it, with answers because I, I have no idea. Um, you know, this is beyond my pay grade. I want to tell the board also, we do not have to vote on this. If people are uncomfortable, we can pull it and we don't have to vote on it. Mrs. Levy. You're on mute. Muted. Muted. You're muted. Hitting it, but not hitting it hard enough. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I, I agree with what Greg is saying, uh, what, what Dorothy is saying. It could be superseded by what the president um, does. And it could also, um, the, the, um, the governor could also um, do an executive order, order similar to what he did today. Um, and I don't know for sure um, that it, on this particular, um, that we need to vote on this particular bill. I guess what concerns me is that as they're making these decisions in New Jersey and in Washington, um, as I am seeing it every day, they're not necessarily aware of how it trickles down and affects um, school districts like ours. So while we don't necessarily need to vote on this today if everybody is not comfortable, um, I think it's just um, behooves us to keep be aware of how all these things and how all these could affect us. Because if we didn't get our tax um, revenue, um, it, even if the school is closed, we still have bills and things that we have to pay. Um, so it's just important for us to keep um, on top of that. But yes, it is correct that it could be superseded by either of the two um, situations that you guys mentioned. Yeah. Mr. Castro? Uh, I just want to make sure that I want to just kind of put it on layman's terms how I understand it, just to make sure we're understanding it all in the same proper context. So it's my understanding that there's a bill that is, uh, that is being they're, they're trying to pass that will allow, allow municipalities to delay the transmission of revenues to um, the schools. And this is simply on our agenda because there's a, there's a feeling that the schools may be um, financially burdened by that bill. And it, although in the context of us, from what I understand from Mr. Moore said, this doesn't necessarily impact us. It's kind of almost a moot point for our school district because we are so far, we can cover our expenses to the end of the school year. 
but going forward, it, it, it may or may not impact us. Is that is it my understanding correct to that point? Yeah, not till the well, the end of the school year, but judging on how this could go, if it goes into the summer, obviously our overhead costs come down. You know, our overhead is much lower because our ten month we're not paying our ten month employees; it's only twelve month employees. But if this goes and it trickles over now into the summer months and into September, then it will definitely impact us. And all we're doing by passing or, or um, voting on this is saying that we want to be a part of a, um, like we're not voting on the actual bill. We're just voting on, on what the, um, what is it it's, exactly? It's just stating our opposition to the bill. Yes. It's just a stating right. our opposition. We're not actually, it's not actually pushing yeah, through any legislation. No. Okay. Okay. But it is delivered to, you know, Governor Murphy, uh, Senate President Sweeney. It does go that the Ordo Board of Ed does back this resolution. It, it, it does let them know that. It's sensible. Okay. Right. So, so one thing you know, to note, too. Jeremy. Je Mrs. So basically, right, we provide our opinion to the governor and, um, and the governing body in Trenton, but they can still vote however they want, right? We just state our opposition and that's it. Yes, okay. yeah, just like a little context too. So like this, it's pretty much, um, it's a boilerplate resolution that was sent out from New Jersey school boards urging the school boards of New Jersey um, to take the stance of opposing this because New Jersey school boards believes in the catastrophic event that this could happen uh, or it could occur to, to school districts if this were to go through. Everybody, everybody is what is uh, going over this resolution. All the school board, all the members, all the school districts yes. are talking about this resolution. NJASA, NJPSA, uh, NJEA, all of the associations have also, um, not just school boards, everyone. Mr. Griffin? I, I was just going to say, if you haven't had a chance to read the actual um, bill, the A3902, it was submitted by a, a Bergen County um, assembly member, and uh, that assembly member is also a teacher. I'm not saying that like plays into it one way or the other, but um, it is that's where the original piece of legislation came from. It wasn't Cardinal? Uh, it was Wim Wimberly. He's a dentist. So, Mr. Castro? So, yeah, uh, just considering where we are in terms of this pandemic and, you know, who knows how far this is going along, I, I think our opinions on this could change as time progresses. So, it, it seems as though it might make sense to not vote on it just as, like, as you suggested, maybe not vote on it just yet. Or, I don't, I don't know how that would be handled. Can we just push it off until the next meeting until we can form a better opinion on it? Or is that possible? Is it supposed to be voted on by the assembly at the next meeting? Do we know when this is going to be voted on? I, th I think it's, isn't the next meeting in a couple of weeks? We Although I'm not sure it's on the agenda. I have no problem voting tonight. So the other question I would have is like, I think if it's a huge catastrophe, even if this bill is opposed, I think um, higher levels could step in and just cut our funding, which if our, if the people in town need it, I am all for that. I also am thinking that if this bill uh, does not pass. So we um, do receive our funding. I'm thinking at that time as trustees of the board, but also residents in town, if we saw, if our town came to us and said, we are in dire straits, we have residents that need things, look at around us. I think um, as trustees and also residents, we would say, okay, we are good this time, you know, please keep it for the town. Mrs. Norian. Yeah, I do like the idea that we would be communicating with our municipality instead of just with this bill, giving them the authorization to just not give us the money. Right. As um, I, I think that that's, right. I think that that's really a better way to approach it. If we're all in this together, which is what we're, we are, we don't have one, one elected body um, dictating to another elected body it just we're we're kind of we're kind of caught because um our our municipality does does in fact collect the monies and then they disperse it to us so we're already in that position if we then just say 
okay, you have the authority to just not send the money to us without a discussion. Right. Um, I, th I think that, that that's a slippery slope. Me too. Mrs. Levy? Um, I, I also believe, and I could be, um, this is to extend the deadline that they have to get us the money by. So it doesn't necessarily say that, it doesn't say that they don't have to give us the money. So Mr. Memora, you might know, you probably know better than I, like what the date is that we normally get that money. So this would be delaying or extending the deadline. It doesn't actually say that we don't ever get the money. Mr. Griffin. Yeah, so I just wanted to um, let people know the action history on this bill. Um, it was introduced on uh, 323. It passed the assembly with a vote of 79 to 0. Um, and then it was received by the Senate on 49 without any references, and it's on its second reading. So as far as necessity to do it quickly, if we're going to have our voice heard on it, now is the time to do it. Um, but so far, it's passed without opposition in New Jersey. Is anybody uncomfortable? Is anyone uncomfortable voting on it tonight? I think we should so. vote on it. I'm okay to vote. I'm, I'm sure. okay to vote. I'm okay to vote. I'm, I'm good to vote. Yeah, like I said, my, my only concern is as you get more information as time progresses, your opinions on this could possibly change because of circumstantial circumstances that arise. So that, and it's just so many things, so many factors playing into this that, you know, just, just as an example, if the situation were such dire straits that, you know, we, we said, no, the people in the town need the money, you know, by not paying a large sum of money to other people, the downstream impact on the economy is going to be felt somewhere else. So there's just, you know, there's just so many things to consider that I, I wouldn't feel comfortable on, on saying whether or not I feel like I want to oppose or, or you know, or, or not this particular bill. Mrs. Norian? Just historically, for members of the board who were not around, there were a couple years where, in fact, one payment was left out of the year uh, from from the state, and and um, to then give them authorization to just leave it out because at that point in time, we never did receive, we never got that back um, in the past. That that one month that we missed. Well, you know, it was delayed and, and it just never came to us. So um, I, I'm not saying that this is going to happen, but, but I think we need to voice our opinion that we need to be heard in this whole discussion, not just uh, be told. That's all. Mrs. Shapiro. All right. So since 80% um, of our budget is salaries, uh, and benefits, um, if we don't, I mean, just to be very simple, right? If we don't get that pass through from the municipality collecting, we don't make payroll, right? So this has, and, and even in a catastrophe, I, I'm assuming like school's still running, even if it's not physically in that building and we need to make payroll. Um, I, I, I think that, uh, Regardless of how the assembly has voted, it is, you know, it's okay for us to tell them that we, how we feel about the delaying of the payment. Mrs. That's Walker? It. I get a sense that since this bill was only uh, written or brought before the assembly at the end of March, it's a rather political knee-jerk reaction to the situation we're in today and the unpreparedness of all forms of government. So um, it's almost like, well, let's pass this now as another stopgap maybe, or a diversion to what else is going on that we're going to look into. So uh, I, I would not feel comfortable passing this. I agree to say Mr. no. Griffin, did you have a comment, Mr. Griffin? Pardon? No, thank you. Still reading something. Um, Mrs. Walker, I'm sorry. Are you saying you don't feel comfortable passing the resolution today or not feel comfortable with the piece of legislation? I just didn't. Well, both. I don't feel both. the resolution is passed, okay. right? So one and the same. 
I uh, wait, no, I don't think that's right. Mrs. Walker, are you willing to vote today? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think she explained it. Yeah. She's opposed to the bill 3902 passing it. I think she's right. with that. Any other questions, comments? Call the question. Mr. Castro? Uh, F. Stan. Mr. Griffin? Um, yes. Mrs. Levy? Yes. Mrs. Norian? Yes. Mrs. Shapiro? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Darian? Yes. Mrs. Nichols? Yes. Moving forward, we'll move to the delegate report, Mr. Wall. Any report? Um, the only report I have is I have a legislative meeting scheduled for May the 9th, a week from Saturday. It's a virtual yeah. meeting. Okay. No but travel. I don't need any coffee. <laughs> You're going to be voting on anything that we should know about? I doubt it. Okay. All right, uh, moving forward, personnel, Mrs. Walker. Yes, thank you. Um, we had a meeting last week via Zoom and discussed many of the items um, that are presented here in the agenda, and I'd like to present F1 through 9. I'll second it. Second by Mr. Walsh. Any questions or comments? Mrs. Levy? Just notice, I don't know if this is um, on purpose or not, but in item number F3, um, line 35 and 36, is there a reason why the, the, um, the uh, longevity pay is not added to the final number? There's a couple of things. That's a good question. No, that should have been added to the final number. Okay, so, so 35 that, and 36 is where I happened to catch it. Yeah. I didn't see it anywhere else, but. Good catch. Okay, yep, that'll be reflected in the minutes. Okay. Eagle eyes. <laughs> a lot of free time, you see. <laughs> <laughs> Any other uh, questions? Call the question. Mr. Castro? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mrs. Levy? Yes. Mrs. Norian? Yes. Mrs. Shapiro? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Darian? Yes. Mrs. Nichols? Yes. Policy, Mrs. Levy? Yes, we um, met this evening right before that and reviewed a couple of new um, policies and regulations that were have came down that we have to edit and we will have them for first um, review at the next board meeting and um, that's it. Thank you. Public relations, Mr. Griffin. Um, no, no new update. I, I do have a question though. Um, I, whenever um, we were moving items in F, um, did we only move F1 through F9 and not F10 through 12, or did I miss something? They were both. Oh, they were both. Do the latest one that revised. It's going to okay. be on the next one. That's fine. I just wanted to make sure. So, thanks. Um, okay, so we'll move to open to the public, like we said before. If you would like to raise your hand. And uh, we will unmute, unmute you and go from there. So it's open to the public. Sixty people or record attendance. And no yeah. one wants to say seventy-one online. Seventy-one. Yeah, 71. That includes 
That includes us. us. Participant 71. Right. They all left to go watch TV, so we, we can't see them. <laughs> Good. Greg, raise your hand on the um, on yours so I can see if it's working. Oh. Oh, yep. there is. Oh, hold on. Greg, wait. Ah, that's Greg. Yeah, so it is working. I wanted Greg to be a, a attendee so we could just test things. Oh, okay. Jeremy, go into school and see if there's any questions. <laughs> <laughs> One second, we'll just go like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm not missing anybody, right, everybody? Nobody sees anything, right? No, I'm not seeing anything. Well, we thank you all for attending our meeting tonight. Um, we'll move to old business and new business at this time. Anybody have either? I have, I have a question on the new business. Why are we paying for health benefits when nobody can go to a doctor? Nobody can get <laughs> operated on. You can, you can have telehealth, Mr. Walsh. Telehealth. How it's does that virtual work? Virtual visit. It's a virtual visit. You haven't had one yet? It's, it's very entertaining. <laughs> no, I haven't had the pleasure. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah. So, Mr. Griffin? Yeah, just a bit of a new business and just a comment. Um, I'm just, uh, I should have said it earlier, but so thankful for what the teachers and administration has done. It has been incredible. And I think so many pe parents um, that have experienced it would echo it. One thing I, I know, like, we're sitting here worried about, and I've been talking to my neighbors, is like, whenever school's out and we don't have these items for kids to do and access to this stuff, a um, little concerned about what it's going to be for the kids. So um, whether we answer this now or not, um, is there an opportunity for the um, school district to continue offering some of those services? Whether I'm not trying to put work on the teachers, but I am thinking about like this idea of some of the access to um, some of the skill sets over the summer the programs. Like I said, we don't have to answer it now. I just want to bring it up. This is Longo. In the past, we had programs that the kids could dial into. I don't know if we still have them, but maybe if it's something we just give access to the kids over the summer, maybe you could look into it? Sure, absolutely. Oh, I'm, I'm oh, muted. Mrs. Levy? Oh. Um, as far as the, um, why can't I think of the name? The summer program that they- Explorations. We, it's explorations, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, has there been any talk about how maybe we could make some of those vir that virtual for the summer if need be? Mrs. Longo and I were talking last week. We're just starting to talk mm -hmm. about exploration. So we're going to, we're waiting to see what the governor's going to do with the end of school right now and okay. maybe another week or two. Let's see. Yeah. Maybe May 15th, he'll. I think he said today he was going to make a decision or come out before then. Yeah, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Any other older new business? I'm just, one other thing I don't know if all of the board members saw, but that amazing video that the teachers made, I don't know that was great. Who, put, who put it all together. Uh, my children have watched it multiple times, um, <laughs> but it really, it, it was really, really nice. It's just nice for the kids to see you and, you know, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Some of them were with their with their families, and it's like seeing your teacher out of her natural or his natural habitat, yeah. you know, whatever. But it was really, really wonderful, and I can say that we appreciated it. If you haven't seen it, you can go on the website and uh, view it. So I, I think. Go ahead, go ahead, Mrs. Walker. I just wanted to say, you know, we look at all they've done academic wise and. All the things that I, I, I'm amazed at, and I have grandkids in other school districts, and, the, and there isn't a comparison to what I see the level of, of instruction going on remotely. But also, I see a great deal of that social and emotional caring about our kids mm -hmm. um, and about our teachers, and, and the importance that if the kids aren't emotionally happy and at these trying times, that certainly can be a problem, that the teachers are there and, and our administration to understand this. And I think that that is so important, especially 
in these days. So um, kudos to everyone. Very proud of, of all that we're doing at OPS. Beautiful job. Mrs. Morian? I just want to not forget that we, we have our administrators, we have our staff, we have our students, um, but let's not forget that um, the parents have really played mm -hmm. an important part yeah. in making sure that the remote learning goes on too. Yes. Um, they support everything that we do um, and we can't forget that, you know, they're, they're part of the team. You know, they're in it with us. So I don't want to forget, and I, kudos to the parents as well. I agree. Mm -hmm. Any other old or new business? Uh, there is a hand that's up now. I Oops. see. <laughs> what did we start? <laughs> is the board yeah, okay? Okay, so we've passed open public comment, but is the board okay if we go back to it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Mr. Marmora, would you unmute Mrs. Pisa, Ms. Pisa's, um, okay. Okay. Ms. Pisa, are you on? Hi, yes. Okay. I just wanted to say, I was listening to, uh, Mrs. Levy said she wasn't sure who had put the video together, and Helene Albrecht and uh, Ro Cataldo spent many hours putting together and compiling everybody's pictures to get them out there. They did a great job. It was really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I've watched it more than once myself. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Mrs. Levy, you're muted. You're muted. You're muted. Ah, I was just shaking my head. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so at this point, um, we need to go into a closed session, so we will be closing out the public. So I need a motion to go into closed session. Would somebody like to make that? Moved. So it's so moved Second. to go in for um, personnel slash negotiations item. Okay. So Mrs. Norian made the motion. Mr. Walsh seconded it. We'll go in at 847. We want to thank everyone from the public who was here. And I believe Mr. Marmara is now going to cut that session. <laughs>